So I've been asked to address the management of fibular hemimelia, and the first thing I did was to change the title to post-axial hypoplasia, realizing there's a spectrum from what you just saw presented. They may have a significant femoral shortening as well as many other problems. And post the uh, fibular hemimelia does not do justice to the fact that there may be a litany of problems, many listed here, that can evolve and be apparent over the years. The parents may be relieved in the nursery to see that their child's missing the fifth toe, but what they don't know is what the future holds with complex reconstruction and progressive limb-like inequality. So I think it's a more generic, comprehensive term. And it's also been estimated, we, we have the multiplier in other ways to know, but it's long been said that the percentage, in this case of femoral shortening at the outset, is maintained throughout growth. So if you have 20% shortening at age three or so, it may be 20% at maturity, converting into a substantial discrepancy worthy of lengthening. It's not a, a benign condition. The insidious problems mount to destabilize the knee and cause back problems. This is a guest case, untreated until teenage years. So if they present like this, you have much reconstruction to do. Um, and this is beyond the scope of just guided growth. So if you get a late start in this situation, you have complex major surgical reconstructions to do, and you may anyway. Historically, the guidelines of treating limb length inequality of any etiology have been to typically ignore discrepancies that are modest or mild of less than two centimeters. And then between two and five, uh, growth modulation is worth doing by whatever means you choose. Five or greater is consigned to, typically, to limb lengthening. And so, but there are overlapping indications for these two. And I've started earlier and earlier to employ this and delay the limb lengthening and make it simpler and fewer lengthenings, as I'll show. This is a patient of mine I treated years ago who had post-axial hypoplasia on the left. This is at 15 months, and it progressed, as I knew it would, to five centimeters by age five. So I used an X-fix, span the knee, lengthen her femur five centimeters, knowing that it, there would be more to hold in the future. And over the years, she had a total of 10 procedures, probably more since, um, despite my lengthening. Yes, there was some guided growth in the mix as she went along. Here she is at age, at maturity, 14, I believe, with not a good outcome, and uh, including limb light, residual limb length inequality despite belated tethering, failed ACL reconstruction, knee instability, back pain, medication, sedentary, this is not something I would have predicted or hoped for in this population. She's not addicted to opioids, but it's always a concern that when you do prolonged repetitive procedures that there may be social and family issues as well. So uh, of late, I've done early guided growth on a short extremity to restore and maintain alignment even repeatedly and often um, inhibit the opposite extremity hoping to avoid frames altogether in favor of intermedullary lengthening devices. And so far, that's working out well. This is a patient with post-axial hypoplasia. This is a patellar view, and yes, he has a shallow sulcus. This is a condylar hypoplasia. It's not just valgus. There is a shallow sulcus. There can be patellar instability. We know the cruciate ligaments are deficient. They may have retroversion. So it's a complicated issue even in the beginning. And if you use the multiplier, which is handy and helpful, this would suggest for him 6.5 at maturity. This is not, however, the entire leg. His foot is smaller, and the ilium may be smaller, so the ultimate discrepancy is maybe more than you predict. So on a percentage basis, 6.5 discrepancy for the long bones for him. I started at age 4 with the optional arthrogram tethering the medial femur to let the lateral condyle grow and correct valgus and uh, have been repeated it over the years. So this is the first correction. I removed the plate and subsequently put in another plate as it recurred, inhibited this femur. In, when you do this for length, you need to be watchful because in this case, he was drifting into some valgus. And even though I had removed screws, the valgus was evolving. So I suspected there was tethering and took out the hardware and corrected it with the medial plate. 
So it's easily corrected if you are watchful and intervene. In the interim, over six years in this case, the sulcus improved, the patella is in a good situation, it is stable. And interestingly, the retroversion that he had corrected as well. So these things are helpful to achieve before you do a lengthening, whether it's with the frame or a rod. And as you continue um, through the current state, he's now uh, 12. He is large enough to accept a precise rod that will fit to gain five centimeters. He has four more years of growth. So do you want to over lengthen this leg anticipating that or inhibit this leg? Um, we're going to wait till next summer. The closer to maturity, the more accurate your lengthening. Um, so this is a work in progress. This is a different child with uh, post-axial hypoplasia progressing. Nowadays, I would even start this early with the um, guided growth. Uh, but nevertheless, have inhibited the medial side and straightened the leg and inhibited the opposite side, decelerated, so to speak, to maintain her in closer, uh, less discrepancy and postpone the lengthening here she is uh, slightly older. I've added screws back here. Oh, this is recent, actually. Added the screws back here to inhibit once again and put a plate there to straighten that. So, yes, she'll probably need ephemeral lengthening, but uh, close to maturity would be better. And uh, this patient, I'm not sure, is having a similar strategy of the combined early guided growth. This one now is... 11 and a half, only has a modest discrepancy. The family doesn't want lengthening if they can avoid it, so I'll manage this only with guided growth. That's probably the exception, but it's worth trying. This patient with uh, the same diagnosis, early uh, guided growth, and uh, repeated over time, removed the plate, he went into valgus, put it back in, inhibit this side, repeating the process, etc. Just to show you consistently this does work safely. At age 12, he has, uh, this is a girl, she has an overall six centimeter discrepancy, probably two more years to grow. This will increase slightly. And shown here is the orthopedic emojis of the various eight plate management. Um, I realize the implants are expensive, however, the treatment is not. This is Typically 30 minute surgery, same day, and quick recovery. So in aggregate, all of these are less expensive than a single frame or rod. So currently, the major discrepancy is 4.5 in the femur with a little less in the tibia. So I agreed with the parents that uh, I, these were close to the epiphysis. So I removed these recently, added plates to address the tibial discrepancy, and perhaps next summer we'll proceed with the precise rod. And finally, congenital short femur, not post-axial hypoplasia. But to illustrate, this is not EDH. Yes, there's delayed ossification. There's some acetabular dysplasia. As he grew, he's now two and a half or so with the varus of the femur that invites an osteotomy. However, this dysplasia in part is due to weak abductors and a very tall trochanter. Here's the tip of his trochanter up here. The abductors are running horizontally and can't stabilize the hip. There is a pretty good analog for the acetabulum, however. So I reason that to tether this now will optimize growth of the neck and abductor strength and protect against instability and osteotomies in the future, and at the same time inhibited the, the distal femur with a plate. Sometime later, he was making some improvement in alignment. I was suspicious of this. And, uh, and yet he was asymptomatic, so this is a year interval. This had not really produced any further correction because this is no longer a tension band. The screw is engaging up here. There's the metaphyseal flare. So it's not really helping. So I repositioned it percutaneously to get a better grip, and I repositioned this to get a, a, a better purchase here. And I'll continue to monitor his growth. So limb lengthening is... Uh, is really interesting and challenging, and it's high-tech and achieves good results. This is my first baseball mitt when I was in Little League, maybe the first that Spalding made. And you can achieve a lot with low-tech, especially in conjunction with high-tech when needed. 
In, in summary, uh, early intervention is useful and repeat is necessary. You're protecting the patella, perhaps the ACL, if there is one. You may correct retroversion in the process, optimize the function, and reduce the discrepancy at maturity, postponing lengthening, preserve their childhood, and let them play sports and enjoy life until they have their limb lengthened, hopefully beyond. Acclimate the parents, economize the management, perhaps a single rod lengthening, um, and avoiding frames. Gracias.